fellas. Mickey, will you cool it? It's the four Martians. Oh. Oh, what's that, Betty? What's happening? We need a guitar string. Oh, okay. I think so. Yeah, which one do you need? You got a B? Yeah. Yeah, B. Okay. What, are you guys playing a gig or something? I'm better. We're auditioning for Hubble Benson. Hubble Benson, the, the TV producer? Yeah, he's looking for a singing group to star in his new TV show. Didn't you guys get an invitation? Oh, uh, sure we did. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, okay, we'll see you at the audition. Thanks for the string. Yeah. Later. Thanks, sir. Good luck. Hey, let's check the mail. Bill? Bill? A bit. Hey, there's nothing but bills here. How come the Martians got an invitation and we didn't? Well, you know, there are probably very few invitations. Two or three. Sure. Hey, it's the foreign agents. Hi, man. Did you get your invitation? Uh, no, you see, our mail doesn't come till late Monday. Oh, like Thursday. <laughs> well, uh, got a split for rehearsal. This is our big chance. <laughs> big chance. Yo, ho, ho! Oh, hey, it's the Jolly Green Giant. Yo, ho, ho. Hey, uh, what's new, Jolly Green Giant? Ho, ho, ho. Hiya, monkeys. Do you want to know what we got in the mail? Yes. Mm -hmm. An autographed photo of Annette Funicello. Oh. <laughs> we thought you meant you got an invitation to Benson's audition. Oh, yeah, we got that, too. <laughs> any other group in town. Right. <laughs> but all those other groups got invitations that out audition. Yeah, except us. <sighs> well, what are we gonna do? Well, we can't take this lying down. <laughs> well, I hope we starve. We are starving. <laughs> They'll be sorry when they find us dead on the floor. <laughs> I can see the headlines now. Skinny group found in California. <laughs> oh. Wait a minute. Why don't we just send a tape to Mr. Benson? What tape? What tape? The tape we did on that tape recorder that we hired. Oh, um, man, I think I left the tape in the recorder when I returned it. <laughs> We'll have those contracts right in the mail early in the morning. And we gas to the wife. All right. Did you see any old trapeze muscles there, Tony, baby? Yes, sir, Mr. Benson. <laughs> Miss Chomsky. Yes, Mr. Benson. Where's the dictaphone? It's broken. It's broken? <laughs> TV show to produce contracts to dictate. Your dictaphone is being repaired. I rented you a tape recorder. A tape recorder? Okay, bring it in. Are you sure it's all right to come here without an invitation? Man, how else are we going to get an audition with Vincent? Come on. You know what you're doing, Miss Chomsky? I think so, Mr. Benson. Hey, who are they? What's going on? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Benson. I can't understand. Sensational! Sensational! That's great! That's the group I'm looking for! They're gonna star on my new TV show! Who are they? And get them over here! I can't, Mr. Benson! Can't! You say can't, I find the stars on my show and you keep saying can't! That tape was on the machine when I rented it! I can't imagine who they are! Miss Chomsky, if you say can't one more time, you're fired! But I can't, Mr. Benson! <laughs> Miss Chomsky! You're fired. Thank you, Mr. Benson. <laughs> yes, for uh, Benson Hubble Productions 302. Shall we? Yes. Sir. Oh, Peter, please tell me it isn't the hiccups. It isn't the hiccups. I mean, I only perform as a group if you've got hiccups. Yeah. I'm sorry about this, but I always get the hiccups when I perform for a big producer. Uh, you saw that. It's the first time I ever performed for a big producer. Well, it's 100% so far. <laughs> yeah, but you got to find that group. I've called the booking agents, every disc jockey in Hollywood, and the recording company. The hospital? You don't think we'd find them in a hospital? No, that's for you. If you don't find them. <laughs> Good, I need the rest. <laughs> Listen, I'll get rid of your hiccups. 
Now, just imagine you're in some far-off place and you're on the rolling high seas and you're heading for Madagascar. Hey, he's turning green. Hey, Peter, what's the matter? Seasick. Seasick? <laughs> I checked with the talent scouts, the movie and TV studios, all the discotheques, and still no luck. Cut. I'll find that group myself. <laughs> when I want an idiot to do a job, I'll do it myself. <laughs> now forget it, Pete. Now listen. You're a thousand miles away. It's springtime. And it's a field of new mown hay. Oh, he's changing color. Hot shoes! Oh, it's hay fever. Hay fever! Hay <laughs> fever! Okay. Six, eight, ten, twelve. When he hits twenty-eight, kid, you better sell fast. Twenty. Twenty. A couple better than a big man with polka dots come past here. Polka dots? Yeah, he just went out that way. Twenty-eight. Better sell fast, kid. <laughs> hey, that guy must have been Hubble Benson. Yeah, Hubble. Hey, my hiccups are gone. Yeah, so is our chance for an audition. Maybe we can still catch him. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Sure you're all right? Well, it's, it's nothing. Some kids tried to stop me getting into my car, but I shook them off. You did? Probably a bunch of autograph hounds. Now, the important thing is, you've got to find me that singing group. You've come to the right place, Mr. Benson. We'll find your group for you. Finding things is our business. I'll take down all the details. And, uh, P, 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 no, maybe it's in D, huh? Uh-uh, not there. What are you looking for? Huh? I said, what are you looking for? Oh, uh, 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 a pencil. I got it here just a second ago. It just couldn't disappear, could it? We're almost at your neck time, fellas. It does wear out of sight clothes. <laughs> you know, I still say the only way we're going to get in there for an audition is to just go right up and just, just see him. You say you know Mr. Benson? Know him? Why, he cured my hiccups. Hiccups? <laughs> sure, see? Hick, like that. <laughs> 35. <laughs> <seven>. <laughs> and there's only one way to get rid of hiccups. What's that? Scare it out of me. <laughs> He's worse than before. You're all right with the hangnails in it, Tilda. Still nothing, Mr. Benson. Easy on the half moves, Tilda. More newsmen outside. They want to know if there's any truth to the rumor that you can't find a certain rock and roll group. Hold it. Okay. What's wrong with me? Well, you're rude, irritable, and crazy. I've got the greatest little publicity gimmick to promote my new show, and I don't use it. Very nice. Easy, I'm still there. Easy. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. We can get in to see Benson uh, in person. We'll phone again. Right. All right. That's the story, boys. I want to star him, but I can't find him. That's quite a story. The mystery group and a half a million dollar contract. You better make that a million dollars. It's going to be an hour show. <laughs> Easy on the half moons, Tilda. Uh, hello, can I speak to Mr. Benson, please? Hello, Mr. Benson? Uh, Mr. Benson, my... no, I wanted Hubble Benson. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mr. Benson, there's a Mr. Jones on the phone. He says it's urgent. Ah, yes, excuse me, fellas. That's probably Byron Jones in the New York office. He's always got something urgent. All right, Josie. Start talking. Easy on the half moons there. <laughs> I'm insane. 
seeds about you planted have started to grow wild, and I feel that I must yield for the wisdom of the child. And this love you bring, no doubt I can't deny. With your wings, I can learn to fly, sweet young thing. Mr. Benson, hello? Oh, Fraser? Hello, can I help you, sir? Oh, yeah, uh, we're musicians and we rehearse. I mean, we're, um, we're auditioning here in the phone booth and we got cut off. What are we going to do now? Do you know that one, Collie Baby? <laughs> oh, that's very funny, yeah. <laughs> okay, mate, the phone booth's yours. Peter. Little Abner, peanuts. Oh, say, this is funny. <laughs> this little guy hits the big guy over the head with a club, and the big guy hits the little guy in the jaw. <laughs> what comic strip is that? What comic strip? This is the editorial page. <laughs> You're insane. You're right, you're lying. Hey, look at that. Hey, fellas, did you see this? TV executive hunts mystery group. What does it say like? It says Hubble Benson. Uh, blah, 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 and they don't know who they are. Uh, he's out trying to find them. Man, that's justice for you. Here we are trying to get in to see him, and he's out trying to find another group that isn't even trying. And to tell me it off, he doesn't even know who they are. Well, if he doesn't know who they are, why don't we be them? Oh, come on, Peter. We don't know what they sound like. Well, how many different kinds of groups are there? And now with you as inspiration, I look toward a destination, sunny bright that once before was blue. I have no more than I did before, but now I've got all that I need. For I love you and I know you love me. So take my hand, I'll start my journey, free from all the helpless worry that keeps this the man to be alone. More strength is mine when we're together, and with you I know I'll never have to pass the high road for love. I have no more than I did before, but now I've got all that I need. For I love you as I know you love me. Play the magic finger. wrong, Mr. Benson? I give up. I'm tired of looking for that mystery group. What do you say? We audition a crowd we sent out the invitations to. Maybe there's something. Hey. <laughs> right away, sir. The first three groups are here, Mr. Benson. Well, bring in the first one. Yes, sir. Okay, fellas. Jolly Green Giants first. Yo ho ho! All right, boys. Let's see what you can do. Chomsky, let's record this. Yes, sir. Here we go. Not again, Chomsky. That's the monkeys. You know that group? Sure, the monkeys. The no style group. They live at the beach. The beach. That's the group I want. Chomsky, get ready. That's the phone book. 
We're off to the beach to find the monkeys. But, Mr. Benson, we're as good as they are. Oh, ho, ho! <laughs> Terrible racket. Terrible racket, man. It's your plane. Oh, no. It sounds more like the foreign agent. No, no. It sounds like the four Martians. You know what it sounds like? Yo, how about the Bob Boone Giants? That's the sound, boys. You're going to be the stars of my new TV show. Why, within one month, you won't be able to turn on a television or radio set without hearing you play my theme song. How does it go, Miss Chomsky? La, 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 What's wrong with me? Well, you're rude, impolite. Miss Chomsky, you're the star Absolutely of my new show. Absolutely unpalatable. Terribly rude. Me. I'm doing it as well. I'm doing it as well. You know, I really feel bad about blowing that big chance, man. Don't worry about it, Peter. We all felt bad. Yeah, but I felt so blue I wanted to do something silly like... Forget show business and go to the South Seas or something. No kidding. Then after all, I thought to myself, so what? So we lost a hundred dollar job. Hundred dollar a week? Peter, stars make more than a hundred dollars a week. They do? Sure they do. How much do they make? Oh, I don't know. Some of them make as high as five thousand dollars a week. Five thousand? Five thousand dollars? Don't you worry, Peter. One of these days we'll get our break. Peter? Hey, Peter? He's gone! <laughs> He's gone! <laughs> Well, he's about uh, uh, five ten. He's light brown hair. Yeah, he cries a lot. He has hiccups. Yeah. He has fever. And he gets very seasick. But he still may be heading for the South Seas. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Uh, I got a pencil here somewhere. Oh, a pencil. <laughs> hey, fellas, uh, we do a lot of pictures that have fights in it and uh, gangsters and everything. Do you ever get into fights yourselves? Dude, we had an incident in Hawaii where somebody uh, remarked about my hair. About uh, what? My hair being long, you know? Yeah. And there was like ten big guys <laughs> and little old me. Are you sensitive about that? Um, I'm not sensitive if it, you know, if it's like, you know, in jest, somebody yeah. laughs and says, you know, yeah. just one thing. But if they carry on about it, it makes me mad. If you went into a restaurant, uh, they, you know, refuse to wait on you because of your hair or something like that, you know, are you quick to strike back? I invoke my constitutional rights. <laughs> what do you do? You leave? No, I go, I invoke the Civil Rights Act. But there's been a lot of talk about the riots that have been going on in Sunset Strip. There was a riot. You know, there was a lot of vandalism. There haven't really been riots. They've been... Uh, in actuality, since I, since I was there, there have been demonstrations. And, uh, but I guess a lot, a lot of people and uh, journalists don't know how to spell demonstration, they, so they use the word riot because it only has four letters. First, tell me a little bit, what, quickly, what are the demonstrations and who's taking place in them? Well, it's mostly the kids um, that are uh, from the ages of around 15 to, I'd say, 20 or 21. Uh, under 18, it's a California law that uh, you're not able to go into a teenage nightclub. Uh, that sells uh, alcoholic beverage. There's a 10 o'clock curfew imposed on these young people that, uh, uh, regardless of whether it's uh, a good thing or a bad thing, uh, they still don't like it. I think it probably has a lot to do with the fact that uh, uh, of somebody telling them they have to be in by 10 o'clock. Um, that's sort of the same thing as saying that they have to cut their hair. You know, I mean, it's it's against the law to tell somebody they can do that. Which Would you like to see all the kids in the country wearing hair like yours? I would like to see all the kids in the country wearing their hair like that. I'd like to wear it. How do you feel? So, Mickey, how do you feel about that? Exactly. Oh, I'm with exactly. you. I'm with you. And when it first happened, there was a few comments made, one by the, the sheriff of Los Angeles. He said that the curfew should be abolished. He says, take the babysitting job out of the hands of the police, put it in the hands of the parents. If the parents think their kids can be out after 10, they should be out. Most everybody that was there says that the vandalism was caused by kids in their very late, like 18, 19, 20, and 21, like that age kid. The only people representing the kids are the kids themselves. And nobody not, listens to kids there. talking for kids because kids are only kids, you know? And they go through this vicious cycle. Authority does. I'm being very general because I don't want to, like, call names or anything. The reason I haven't spoken all this time is because the, it doesn't matter what I say, nobody will listen to me because I'm under 21. <laughs> so I'm just keeping my mouth shut. Here we come. 